When I was a kid in England, all kinds of people turned up at our house in the countryside. Some of them were writer friends of my father, people like J.D. Salinger and Doris Lessing, but most of them were completely unknown. My very, very favorite visitor that we had was an Indian magician. And over the weeks he stayed, weeks he stayed, he taught me his repertoire of magic tricks. I was like 10 years old. He eventually had to leave the house because a conjuring trick went wrong and a fireball tore through the house. And heartbroken, I pledged that when I was old enough, I would go to India and I would study magic. And that's what I did. It's the kind of stage magic that's used in India by so-called godmen on a daily basis. You know the kind of thing I'm talking about, um, lying on beds of nails, eating glass light bulbs, walking on fire, the usual kind of godman thing. I, I spent months in Calcutta studying with a magician, and I eventually learned all kinds of tricks, but it's not the tricks themselves that have stayed with me so much as the preparation that went into them. The magician, who is this crazy sadist called Hakim Faroz, said, I could never hope to learn the secrets of Indian magic until I had prepared myself to absorb them. He used to say that in order for a sponge to soak up ice, the ice would first need to have its form changed. It would need to be melted into water. So my magician master claimed the secret to success in anything was to train oneself to observe the world at a kind of micro level. 